So we're continuing to look at factoring, and now we're going to look at factoring trinomials. Specifically trinomials in the form x squared plus bx plus c, where the coefficient of your x squared or your quadratic term is a 1. I will point out that we'll also look at x to the 4th plus bx squared plus c. Again, we have to have that coefficient of 1 on the x to the 4th. So our whole goal of factoring is to make a multiplication problem. So if I think about what type of multiplication problem would give me these um, this as a product, I know that whenever I do a binomial times a binomial and use that foiling process, I always get that trinomial back. So essentially what I'm going to be doing is when I factor this form, I'm going to use a method called factor sum table, and I'm going to be unfoiling, so to speak. So I have my steps here. We've already looked at step one. We'll continue to use step one. From there, we said we would then check to see if we have that binomial and be able and see if we could use the perfect, or the, excuse me, the special formula with it. So step two is going to kind of split into two parts. I'm going to say, do I have a binomial? If yes, I'm going to try to use that special formula. If not, <clears throat> I'm just going to move down and ask, is it a trinomial with a coefficient of one? If yes, I'll use a factor sum table. I do want to point out that there will be times, specifically when we have the x to the fourth, that we may need to cycle back because we'll get a binomial back and we may be able to use that special formula with it and you'll see what that looks like and I believe the third example is, is where that shows up. So jumping ahead, how do I use factor sum tables? Well here are my steps. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two sets of parentheses because remember I'm unfoiling so I want that binomial times binomial. I'll put an x in the front of each and to determine what number goes in the back I'm going to make a little table where I can do some essential, essentially some trial and error to figure out two numbers that multiply to give me the last term and add to give me the middle term. So let's go ahead and look at some examples and see what that looks like. I'll leave those directions up. Okay, so I first look and I ask myself, do I have a GCF? The answer is no. Is it a binomial? The answer is no. Is it a trinomial with a coefficient of one? And my answer is yes. So to determine how to factor this, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say I'm going to try to find two numbers that multiply to be 21 and add to be 10. So again, this is kind of a table where I can do some trial and error. So 21, I know 7 times 3 is 21, and I also know that 7 plus 3 is 10. So it looks like my first guess worked correctly on this one. So once I've got my guess correct, all I'm going to do is set out those set of parentheses. I'll put an x in the front of each of them. Since foiling x times x will give me that x squared I want. And then I'm going to put my numbers from this table in the back of each of these parentheses. So a positive 7 and a positive 3. And because it's multiplication, I could have put the positive 3 first and the positive 2nd second, second, or the positive 7th first. Um, it doesn't matter either way. Looking at the second example, again I go through my steps and I ask myself, is there a GCF? And I respond with no. Is it a binomial? Still no. Is it a trinomial with a coefficient of 1? <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, it is. So I'm going to go ahead and use my factor sum tables. So once again, I'll do factors of my last term with the sum of my middle term, remembering that sine belongs to the number, so it is a sum of negative 8. So when I think of two things that multiply to be 12, maybe I think 3 times 4. However, when I do 3 plus 4, I do not get negative 8. So that did not work. So I have to try something else. So after realizing that didn't work, I also realized that if I want two numbers to add to be a negative and multiply to be a positive, they're both going to have to be negative. So I'm going to try two new numbers and I'm going to make them both negative. So maybe I try negative 6 times negative 2. That gives me a positive 12 and those also add to be negative 8. So I'm going to go ahead and set my two parentheses up and put an x in the front of each of them. And then because it was a negative 6 I'm going to go ahead and say minus 6 and because it was a negative 2 minus 2. Again order does not matter and there's my final answer. I can always check by foiling. So if I were to foil this, I should get this answer back. If I were to foil this, I should get this answer back. That's a way that you can always check your work to see if you factored correctly. Two last examples. 
On number three, again, I follow that first step of checking for a GCF. And this time I notice I do have a GCF. So I'm going to factor that two out and be left with x to the fourth plus 5x squared minus 6. And then now I'm going to ask myself, because I still have a trinomial in here, can I factor this trinomial with now a coefficient of 1 further? Or was that all I could do was take out a GCF? Well, I'm going to try to set up a factor sum table. Because even though it's x to the fourth, it still works the same way. There'll be one small difference that you'll see in a minute. So I'll do factors of negative 6, and I'm still going to do a sum of 5. And I have to multiply to be a negative, so I'm going to go ahead and say I either want, well, I'm going to have to have a negative times a positive. So I'm going to try, I'm going to try 6 times negative 1. Well, that gives me negative 6. 6 plus negative 1 gives me 5. Again, <clears throat> I'm fairly good at guessing these. Um, you may need to do more trial and error than I'm doing, especially in the beginning. That's okay. Now, this GCF that I factored out is still going to stay in front. I'll set up my two sets of parentheses, but this time I need two numbers or two variables to multiply together to be x to the fourth. Well, I know x squared times x squared is x to the fourth, so instead of putting an x in front, I'm going to put an x squared in front, and then I'm going to go ahead and say plus 6 and minus 1. At the very beginning of this video, I said sometimes you have to loop back, and I noticed that each of these binomials start with a perfect square. So I need to make sure they don't end with a subtract a perfect square, because if they do, I can use my special formula. Well, this one's out because it's plus, but this one I see I have perfect square minus perfect square, because 1 times 1 is 1. So I can say that this back set here has an A term of x and a B term of 1. So I'm going to go ahead and factor this one last time. My first two factors stay the same, and x squared minus 1 becomes x plus 1, x minus 1, following my special formula. So make sure that you are checking that you've done it all. So in this one, again, notice I had to find a GCF, I had to use a factor sum table, and I had to use a special formula. 4 is a good one for you to pause and try. Okay, now that you had a chance to try one, let's walk through it and see how you did. So these numbers can be a little bit more difficult, So because now I'm doing factors of negative 54 with a sum of 3. So what you can do if you can't come up with this at the top of your head is you can use your calculator. And you can say, what is 54 divided by 2? Okay, well, what if I try negative 2 times 27? doesn't work. What is 54 divided by 3? I believe it's 18. What if I tried 3 times negative 18 or negative 18 times 3? Doesn't work. And I could use my calculator to find those different factors, um, but what you should have found is that 9 times negative 6 gives you negative 54, and 9 plus negative 6 gives you 3. It starts with an x squared, so again I'm going to put, or excuse me, it starts with an x to the fourth, so I'm going to put x squared in the front of each of these, and then I say plus 9 and minus 6. The x squareds in the front prompt me to check if I have a special formula. I do not have a special formula for plus, and 6 is not a perfect square, so this is my final answer. So again, here are your steps that we've learned thus far for factor factoring. Um, please do make sure that you bring your notes and examples in with you to class, and you can use these as an aid as um, you are going through your practice.